What is going on guys? Nick here with Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. Welcome to the channel if this is your first time. If not, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to continue talking about soft bead fishing. Uh, we've been covering different ways that you can get your beads pegged, uh, covered the bead knot, and a few other uh, topics when it comes to soft bead fishing. So what I want to do today is get this whole rig set up for you guys from start to finish so you guys can actually get out there and start doing some fishing. So first off, if you guys have not checked out any of those videos and getting your bead pegged is still a uh, unfamiliar concept, go back, check out one of these videos and uh, get yourself on the right track. Come back, get the rest of your rig set up so you can get out there and start catching some fish too. So I've got my rod set up over here. We'll cover the uh, specifics on that after we get this rig set up. But when it comes to uh, float fishing, whether I'm fishing with beads, I'm fishing with jigs, it doesn't really matter. I really prefer this high-vis yellow line so I can actually see what my line is doing in the water and it makes it a little bit easier to get things mended. So now starting out with our line, which is coming off of our rod here, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is put on one of our bobber stops. So now whether you wanna use one of these uh, typical little bobber stops or you wanna use one of the stops that uh, you can get with your packages of uh, bobbers. You can use those, whatever's gonna get the job done. So we're just gonna use what is out here ready to go right now. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your tag end and you're gonna feed it through that little straw piece right there. So now what you're gonna wanna make sure to do so you don't end up doing this backwards is you're gonna wanna grab onto that stop with one hand and on the other hand, you're gonna take that plastic piece and you're gonna pull it away. So now what we're gonna do is just kind of slide this up the line, get it out of the way. And it's got those two tag ends on it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a side of either of those tag ends and we're just gonna pull that guy tight. And we're gonna end up clipping off these uh, tag ends once we get a little further along here. So now that we've got our bobber stop on there, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to take one of our little beads that'll usually come with those packages when you buy them. If not, you can use a three mil, a four mil, uh, those will usually be the right size to get the job done. So we're going to take that bead. We're just going to slide it up our line. Now when it comes to bobber selection, there's a, there's plenty of bobbers out there. I know people that do bobber dog with this setup. I prefer bobber dogging from a boat. So if I'm from the bank and I'm fishing uh, this setup, we're going to be using one of these, uh, I always just call them torpedo floats there. I, I'm a big fan of these uh, clear floats, but I also... I'm uh, notorious for using these guys here. Both are great bobbers. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take our bobber, go to the top of it with our tag end here, and then we're just gonna feed that tag end through that hole in the bobber. And we're just gonna feed it down so it pops out the bottom. There we go. We're gonna pull that up and we're gonna get that out of the way. So now we're gonna add another bead below that bobber. Now I've noticed with these bobbers, that hole is a little bit bigger. So if I were to use that same diameter bead that I used up top down here on the bottom, there's been a few uh, times when my bead has actually kind of got wedged in there and I've had to pop it out. So I'm gonna go with a slightly bigger bead for that guy. What I like to do, because we were running this, this setup so low in the water column, is actually adding on another bobber stop. So for that, I actually prefer using these little uh, bobber stops that have that little soft bead type on there as opposed to the uh, that other string type. So we do not need the bead. So basically what this is gonna do, obviously some of you guys are gonna know, but if we end up snagging up down at the bottom and we end up popping off our three-way with our weight and all that, we're not just gonna leave a loose open end and have our bobber float freely. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who have uh, been standing out on the bank and watched a bobber or two uh, go floating by. So adding on a bobber stop down at the bottom is one way that you can help prevent that from happening. It doesn't always help, but a lot of the times it does. So now we're getting down to where we can add in our three-way swivel or you can add a regular swivel. I actually prefer the three-way. So when we add on that three-way, uh, when it comes to braided line especially, I like using the polymer knot. There's plenty of videos out there. It's uh, one that I highly recommend if you're going to be out there using braid. Time for some new clippers. Now what we could do is move that bobber stop down and just let it rest right on top of that knot. All right, and that brings us down to the business end. So uh, as mentioned, at this point, you should already know where we're at with uh, how to get this bead set up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take 
our setup here and we're gonna tie that onto the other end of that swivel there, not the, uh, not the clip. And when it comes to uh, tying on my leader, I always just do a uh, fisherman's knot. All right, we're gonna cut off some of these tag ends because we are about, about there. But before you uh, end up cutting off these tag ends of your bobber stock, make sure you've got that on there nice and tight. The worst, you know, worst case scenario, you don't have it tight enough and uh, you end up clipping off these little tag ends and now you don't have enough tag end left to be able to make any adjustments and you kind of just got to do that all over. So that's going to give us bobber stop bead down to our bobber, down to another bead, down to another bobber stop to, that's our, our fail safe there. We've got a three-way swivel running down to our leader, which has got our bead and number two gamakatsu hook which i'll cover a little bit more on that in just a second here so now it's going to bring us down to weight what are we going to use to get this bad boy down there in the fish's face and what i like using are these p-line dragon balls there's some dave's tangle free out there uh, if you don't want to use that three-way swivel one thing you can do as well is use an inline weight that's not my preferred method one that's a little bit cheaper because you can go out there and buy this stuff very cheap is a uh, lead hollow core and what I've done with this one is I've crimped the top, as you can see there, and we've just punched a hole right through the top. And we can feed that onto our swivel here. Or what I've done on this guy is I've actually ran some two pound line through there, just doubled it up, and then I crimped that in there. And we can just add that on. Now, if this guy gets caught down on the bottom, it's really just gonna end up pulling out that line. And you get your gear back, you're not losing everything. But these, these uh, P-Line Dragon Balls have been my go-to. I really, uh, prefer using these guys. So all we gotta do is open up that little clip down there. Put our weight on there. And that is gonna be our setup from start to finish. We've got our float, we've got our beads, we've got our weight, and we've got our bead down here at the end with that little gamakatsu hook. Now, I mentioned it uh, earlier, I'll cover it really quick. The two biggest sizes of hooks that are used for this setup are a size two and a size four. Now. The two is a little bit bigger than the size four for those that are not familiar with it. I do a lot of my fishing with beads, uh, granted it does change up quite a bit. 14 is usually where I always start out at. So if I'm using a 14, I'm going to be using that size two. If I use a 14, a 16, an 18, up to the 20 mil beads, I'm going to be using a number two. Now if I start using, uh, say, a smaller bead and I go down to a number 10 or a number eight, and then I'm going to start using these smaller hooks, that little number four. So you're just trying to kind of match up this gear with the size of the bead that's going to be out there. And it's going to give you a good float presentation and just be where it needs to be in that fish's face, getting you some strikes. So this is my setup here when I'm out there throwing beads. It's a 9 foot 8 Okuma Cascade Pro rated for 6 to 15 pounds, quarter ounce to three quarter ounce. I've got that paired up with an Akuma Helios HSX 40 which has been the ultimate setup for me. I really like how everything feels in the hand. Really all that matters is that having a rod that's gonna be long enough that you can make those mins in your line to just keep that proper float through the river column. I'm going size 40 on the reel because I want something that's gonna be able to pack a little bit of line. And if I get a fish that's gonna take off on me, I know that I've got plenty of line on there that's gonna be able to handle that fish making those long runs before I get that thing landed on the bank and bonked over the head. And then again, just that high vis yellow line because this is one of those setups you want to know what your line's doing. You don't want to have big long bows in there. And having that high vis braid is going to make it a lot easier to see what's going on and get you on the right track to fishing it correctly. So this has been my soft bead tutorial. If you guys have missed anything, go back, check out some of these videos, get yourselves on the right track. In the next video, I will be out on the bank fishing this setup, showing you guys how I fish this set up and how most people typically do when they're out there and uh, cross my fingers, we can also get on some fish. So again, thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you guys out. If so, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. As always, y'all, best of luck to you and I hope to see you out on the river.